Hey guys, it's Lori. Um, so I was having a discussion actually over the last couple days with several different people about um, addictions and marijuana. And I know in some parts of the country, marijuana is legal, um, like Colorado, I'm not sure, other places out west. And you have your card and you can just go get it at a dispensary. Now New Hampshire, where I live, has just opened that up but it's really really hard to get you have to have certain i'm not even sure what the illnesses are but it's it's certainly not ready like it's not readily available like it is out west there's another problem here in new england a really severe problem of addiction we have we have all kinds of addictions obviously just like everywhere else but heroin is out of control here. I guarantee that every New Hampshire resident or every Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island resident at least knows somebody that knows somebody that has an issue with heroin, whether they OD'd, somebody that died. Uh, one of my clients just lost her daughter not too long ago. I have several clients that lost their children to this addiction or fentanyl. Opiate addiction is real. So I just heard about something. It's called Kratom. I heard about it several years ago and I didn't pay it much mind. But I just heard about it not too long ago because I guess the FDA, the American government, is banning it. Uh, the beginning of, I guess the end of this month, September, beginning of next month. So I wanted to check it out and see there's somebody very dear to me that has an opiate addiction, and I just wanted to check it out and see what happens with it. I'm not going to give too much information. I, it is still legal now. I'm not breaking the law. I just wanted to check it out and see what it's all about. I know that anybody that is without insurance or with minimal insurance cannot get into a rehab in um, New Hampshire anyway and if you go to an outpatient clinic it's extremely expensive we're talking about like four to five hundred dollars the first visit then they make you come back every week and they charge you like two hundred dollars each time and then it's every month and it's like two hundred dollars a month for the doctor and then you got to pay for the medication and Suboxone is extremely expensive so this could be the answer but of course it's being banned. Tell me what you think. I'm not sure. I'm on the fence. I'm not pro. I'm not against. I don't know yet. I'm going to head over and buy it legally right now and see what it's all about. All right. I will be. Just bought some Mengda, Mengda Kratom. One ounce. It was $20. Um, so this is what it looks like. I'm not going to open it right now. But I guess, I'm not sure, but I guess one ounce is quite a bit. Um, and will last at least four or five days. So I'm going to do some research on Kratom. I got some pictures uh, from inside the store. They told us a little bit about how it works and what the product is supposed to be about. It is going to be banned September 30th. There's a big sign in there. Um... But I'm going to, um, I might even try a little bit myself and see how it works. And I will be right back. Okay, so what I did is I did a, a test. I had 10 different people try it. And out of those 10 people, I wanted to see what the results were. Eight out of the 10 loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, four of those people, no, six of those people have addiction issues and they took it at a time where they were feeling withdrawal symptoms and it took away the withdrawal symptoms it didn't make them super high or anything like that so it's not the same effect as um, like an Oxycontin or any kind of opiate like that or heroin I guess I've never tried heroin so I couldn't say but they said it was different than that, but it took away their withdrawal symptoms. A couple other people have chronic pain and deal with chronic pain every day and want to try to get away from pharmaceuticals. <coughs> Excuse me. They absolutely loved it as well. One person really liked it at first, took away the pain, um, 
worked for hours when the effect started to wear off made a little bit more which in turn made her sick so she's on the fence about it she said she might try it again but she's not absolutely thrilled and the other person just said it didn't work at all so this is only 10 people I mean I didn't I wasn't able to you know let a hundred people try it or whatever but eight out of ten nobody got horribly ill so that they needed to go to the emergency room or anything I did research it and the DEA is saying that there's 13 cases of people dying but then if you look deeper 12 of those 13 they're using other narcotics it's the other narcotics that kill them or other <coughs> other um, their their drug test came back with other substances in their system and the 13th um, was ill anyway so does kratom really hurt people I don't know to me that doesn't prove anything we've got 13 deaths and 12 out of 13 we're doing other stuff that is known to kill people and um, that one had serious health issues anyway so what do we do do we ban it it's going to be banned September 30th the DEA is banning it I guess there was a big march in Washington against it and the reason people are against the ban is because of such a horrible opiate addiction heroin addiction problem so they're banning it because of 13 deaths over since 2012 and we're now in 2016 believe me okay I'm not a drug user I am not you know advocating for drug use but this is a natural herb as I know so is heroin so you know so is cocaine and, and people have used it but my point is, is I don't know about where you live but where I live I would say there's probably 10 deaths a day because of heroin use so I'm wondering I'm wondering if maybe instead of banning it they could do something else maybe try to regulate it or something I'm not sure but I know that the big pharmaceutical companies would get hurt if some other something other than their big high-priced drugs worked for opiate and heroin addiction I know with marijuana there are medical effects to marijuana I know people personally who take it and have benefited medically not recreationally medically <coughs> but it's illegal where I live it, we're just now it's just now passed the medical marijuana bill and um, that's all fine and good but I guess it's very very hard to get I don't know I don't smoke the stuff myself but that's what I was told um, there's somebody here from out west who believes that he, you know so now he's he's a, he's got a card he's a card carrying medical marijuana user and where he lives or where he's from he is able to buy it purchase it at these dispensaries he's got his card his card's no good here so and, and honestly it's not like he's out looking for cocaine or now I know that marijuana is not physically addictive it, it may be uh, emotionally addictive psychically addictive it's not physically addictive it does have medicinal purposes they say that there are claims of these great medicinal purposes I don't know but why is it banned just like Kratom now why can't people make a choice themselves now ecstasy was at one time legal it was a prescription people were loving it the DEA didn't have a problem with that until people started killing themselves hmm so now it's on the streets okay uh, heroin and cocaine at one time were legal prescription drugs so I guess as long as it's in the hands of the pharmaceutical companies big pharma then we're okay just like you know people started taking opiates back you know 10 15 years ago I know they took them before that but there was this you know doctors are writing them out writing them out writing them out and all of a sudden oh DEA says no more so now these people law-abiding people by the way chronic pain sufferers are forced to look for an alternative and I would bet that a very large percent of, percentage of the heroin users or fentanyl users or whatever are due to um, losing their medication. And the doctors were kind of put in the middle of this. 
you know, they're losing their license over trying to help their patients. Now, I'm not saying that some of the doctors didn't go crazy on the opiates and here you go, here's a pill. But isn't that the way it still is? Now it's not opiates, now it's something else. I mean, you can go into a doctor, and this happened to me when I was getting divorced. It's like, oh, I'm getting divorced. I got like six prescriptions. I ended up throwing them down the toilet. Xanax and Ativan, and I don't even remember what else. All I said is I'm getting divorced. Oh, you must be stressed out. Here you go. You know, give me a break. And it's okay for these, you know, drug dealers in long white coats. As long as, because they, they're in bed with the pharmaceutical companies. But it's not okay for the people to make a choice to take kratom or marijuana or any other herb that's going to make them feel better. You know what? I'll tell you something. Dandelion tea makes me sick. Cinnamon makes me sick. I choose not to take it. Does that mean it should be banned because it makes me very ill? Dandelion tea makes me extremely ill. I mean, I remember drinking it one time and I think I was in bed for like three days. I thought I was going to die. I'm one person. I'm sure I'm not the only person. But my point is, should the DEA step in and, and take care of that? Should they take care of all supplemental um, vitamins or, or any kind of supplement? Should they? This is my problem with it, okay? Now, if I knew more about Kratom, if I knew that it was killing people, I'd say, okay, we got to do something, you know? But really, you know, a band does nothing, honestly. It doesn't do anything. What except for those people that are using Kratom to get their children off of heroin and try to save their lives. Or for the people that are adults and they're buying the Kratom and they're trying to save their life and have had success with it and now are productive members of society, are holding jobs, are no longer putting a needle in their arm. What's that going to do? It's going to put them out on the street back again because now they can't get their Kratom legally. Or they're going to end up in rehabs, which, by the way, a good chunk cannot get into a rehab, at least where I'm from, because it costs a fortune. An outpatient, like I said before, it's like four or $500 the first visit. Then they make you come back every seven days. And it's like $200 every time you go back. And then eventually they bump it up to once a month. So it's $200 every time you go that month. They don't take insurance. Most of them don't take insurance. And if you have insurance and you can get your prescription on the insurance, good for you. But if you can't, that's another like $400. $400 a month for, for a drug that is keeping you clean off heroin or opiates. Or go to the store and spend $20 and make a cup of tea. Rehab's really, really expensive where I'm from. Not everybody is privy to it. It's ridiculous. But you know what else is ridiculous? Everybody, I can go into the drugstore and I can get as much Narcan as I want right now, no questions asked. If I have a concern about somebody I love, I can go get Narcan. I can go right up to the, um, the, the pharmacy and say, hey, I need some Narcan. They're not going to ask me any questions. They're going to give it to me. Hmm. Interesting, right? So what are we saying to them? Go ahead and use. The, it gives a mixed message. I mean, praise God for Narcan on one hand because it is saving lives. But on the other hand, what are we doing by telling everybody? So we give them clean needles. And I understand we don't want people to die of AIDS or hepatitis. I get that. But so we want to give them needles. And we want to tell them, it's okay, go ahead, use as much as you want because everybody's got Narcan, you'll be all right. Not reminding them that people die every day. Maybe they don't get there quick enough. Maybe their friends desert them so nobody knows they're lying there and it's too late when the Narcan comes. There's a heroin epidemic and we've got to do something about it. Maybe Kratom is not the answer. I don't know. I'm on the fence up and down. But you know what? I'm really sick of my government. All right, anyway, I'm out. Leave your opinion in the comments and let me know what you think. Like I said, I don't know either way. I really don't know, but I know that something's got to be done. All right, talk to you soon.